Hey there guys, my name is Sergey with the Tabletop Warlords and today we're going to be talking about the creepy crawly San Ra Phase Squad. But before we get into all that, if you like this content, go ahead and give the video a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to purchase any of these models, go ahead and hit the affiliate link right in the end of this video. It'll bring you to the Warlord store, and anything you purchase there will give us a small commission. But if you want to support this channel in the best way, pan humanly possible, go ahead and join our Patreon campaign. Our patrons are the lifeblood of this channel, and even a dollar goes a really long way to helping us produce these awesome videos. Sonra phase squads are a really, really interesting choice. That is because they are very much a different part of your army depending on which flavor of Isaurians you're playing. There are two different force organizations when you're playing the Isaurians. There's a normal Isaurian list, which is predominantly pan-human units, and then there's a Sanra task force, which is predominantly Sanra units. In a normal army, the Sanra phase squad becomes a cheap, very punchy specialist unit, whereas in a task force, it's your basic infantry. This unit excels at both of those roles, and it's really, really fun to field. You also can't help but compare it to a regular phase squad. This is because a regular phase squad is the backbone of a normal Isaurian army. So a lot of the time when you're choosing between task force and regular force, you're choosing between regular phase squads and Sanra phase squads. Wherever this unit differs from a normal phase squad, I'll go ahead and make a note of it. The first difference comes up pretty quick in that this unit is only 93 points base. For how punchy this unit is, 93 points is really cheap. This unit also has a significantly better stat line than its human counterpart. They have an average agility at 5 and an average accuracy at 5. They have a sky high strength at 7 and a base armor of 6 which goes all the way up to 8 with their phase armor. This is a predominantly ranged unit, but having a strength of 7 is actually really awesome if you ever have to mix it up in melee combat. They have a respectable initiative of 7, and a respectable command of 8. As far as special rules go, their leader has the leader special rule allowing it to reroll one failed res test, and, and this is the major difference between a San Ra and a human phase squad, the entire unit is large. This has some major benefits, and also some drawbacks. Being large, this unit can see over, and be seen over, smaller units. It also means that you can't shoot at smaller units behind them. This is very tactically useful for a lot of different reasons. Being able to shoot over units gives you a lot of flexibility offensively, and being able to turn yourself into a piece of mobile line of sight blocking terrain can do wonders when you're trying to protect an objective carrier. However, being large does make you a little bit more cumbersome on the battlefield. You can't sprint, meaning you're a little bit slower than a human, and you have trouble accessing some pieces of terrain and buildings. This means that on dense boards, this unit can sometimes struggle. That being said, being large isn't a positive or a negative, it's just an extra layer of tactical complexity with this unit. You can do awesome things with it, and it can also hinder you. Now we've come to one of the major selling points of a Sanra phase squad, its equipment. The entire unit has phase armor, which is pretty good armor, and the leader has an X-sling, which is always useful, particularly when you have strength 7, meaning you're going to hit most of the time with it. But what sets this unit apart is the fact that they have a really awesome gun. The Plasma Duo Carb is essentially like a souped up version of a Plasma Carbine. It has the same firing modes as a Plasma Carbine in that it has a strong single shot and then a dispersed shot with a lower strike value, but both of these are more powerful. Its single shot mode is strike value 3. This puts it on par with some light support weapons and makes it very potent at taking out infantry and some lighter drones. Its dispersed fire mode is strike value 0 just like a regular carbine, but it's rapid fire 3 instead of rapid fire 2. This means you can produce a withering amount of firepower if you want to be sure that you can hit somebody. For the price point of this unit, this gun is very, very strong. This unit can hold its own really well in long range combat, medium range combat, and it's just a little bit below average in close combat. It's also quite defensible despite only having three units, and it being large makes it such a great screener that this unit is just really, really flexible. They also have some really interesting upgrades, although I will say that the base unit is quite cost effective on its own. The first upgrade you can get for this unit is the ubiquitous spotter drone. For 10 points, you get a re-roll in long range shooting and you also unlock the ability to patch sight with other spotters. 
It's nice to have a reroll with this unit because they're firing very few, very strong shots downfield. So you want to make sure you're making contact. Additionally, this unit being large and being able to see over smaller units can be a heavy advantage when you're patching sight. The next upgrade you can get with this unit is a synchronizer drone for 20 points. This upgrade allows you to enact kind of like one-two punch combo plays. There's an infinite number of different ways to use this, so I'm not going to go into it too in depth. It's probably a whole video in of itself. Suffice to say, if you're interested in kind of a combo-oriented playstyle, you should look into this upgrade on any unit that has access to it. If you're looking for a fuller squad, you can increase the amount of San Troopers in this unit for 27 points apiece. You can add up to two troopers, and usually I wouldn't recommend this, but I have some caveats in this one. A full Sun squad is super scary, it puts out a lot of shots, and it's also quite defensible and can sit on objectives and duel people from a long range. That, coupled with the fact that it can fire and then go down, makes it really easy to prolong how long this unit is sitting somewhere. So if you really want to take and hold an objective, and there's a reason in the scenario to sit on it for a long period of time, this can be a pretty useful type of unit. For five points, you can give your San leader sling net ammo in his X-Sling, and this is just a ubiquitously good upgrade. Uh, if you have five points left over, throwing sling net ammo on pretty much any unit that can take it is always going to be useful. It allows you to deal two pins to a unit as opposed to dealing damage, which is particularly useful in a charge situation because a charge is decided by who has more pins at the end of it. Speaking of charging, you can give plasma grenades to everyone in this unit for two points apiece. Because this unit has strength seven, it's really nice to back up that seven strength with a little bit of strike value. Plus, it's a three-man base unit, so it's only six points to give the whole unit plasma grenades, which is kind of nice. And finally, we get to the upgrade that I never recommend. You can upgrade your leader from leader one to leader two for 10 points. I don't want to say 100% of the time, but 99.999% of the time, you're going to have better places to put 10 points. Overall, this makes a really, really interesting unit that provides a very interesting play style whether you want to use it as a specialist unit or you want to use it as the backbone of your army. However, that being said, and this isn't really a note on this unit, it's just a note on uh, Isaurian army building in general, you don't want to be too myopic in your list building. I've found that in human armies, I absolutely like to splash a couple San Ra units in there to provide screening. And I've found in San Ra armies, it can be very useful to have a couple human units to get through difficult terrain or get into buildings. Gates of Antares list building is about layers. Lists that can only do one thing tend to fall apart in comparison to lists that have synergies. Because of this, I don't want to say that this unit is better than a regular phase squad or worse than a regular phase squad, because I really think you need both of them to make the best army you can make. So no matter which army you're building, I definitely recommend having at least one or two San Ra phase squads lying around. And even if you don't feel Isaurian armies, buy the models, because from a hobby perspective, they're super awesome. Kevin always describes them as a madman's conception of a spider, which is really really cool. These guys are kind of like the crossbreed between a giant, a minotaur, and a spider creature. They're definitely the most alien unit on the field in that they're not bipedal. In the lore they don't even speak in a normal human manner. They have like a pheromone language, which I think is really really cool. They also have a really rich history in the fluff. I definitely recommend checking out the Splintering Shard, which has a lot of backstory on the San Kiri. The San Kiri being the San race before it integrated with the Isaurian Imtel. Additionally, I really like the fact that this model has a lot of different textures on it. A lot of Isaurian units are very heavily armored, meaning that you don't get a lot of flesh tones to break up your army. This unit allows you to add a couple pops of color to the field, making your army just look a little bit more dynamic and poppy on the battlefield. Well guys, I hope you found this video informative. I would love to hear in the comments how you guys feel Sanra and what balance you strike between human and San forces in both the Sanra task force and a regular force. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the tabletop.